Hello boys and girls, uh, my name is Jackson and this is going to be my first Unreal Engine tutorial. What we're going to do in this one is we're going to create a little neat moving platform that your third person guy can run around and jump on. So this is just the regular third person template. Um, the platforms, you're going to be able to place them in the world, they're going to have two points that they move between and you're going to be able to change the rate at which they move between those points. Um, so first thing, right click in your content browser, we're going to go add blueprint class um, actor and we're going to call this moving platform underscore BP and we're going to crack that open. By the way if I sound tired, um, I'm usually in bed by this time but I just felt like I felt I felt like I wanted to make a tutorial for some reason and I just spent the last like 45 minutes trying to figure out the friggin screen recording software so I'm bloody exhausted but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, so we're going to create a static mesh, you get add component, um, static mesh, I don't know why I suddenly felt like I wanted to do tutorial but um, I don't know, I just did so here we are. Once you've got your static mesh there, um, open up the viewport, what we're going to do is we're going to set that over here to a chamfer cube, let's scale that so that it looks like a platform, maybe we'll go 3 and then unlock the Z and make that a 1. Um, that looks kind of platformish, maybe 0 0.5 even, that looks better. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add components and we're going to go billboard. And we're going to add in a billboard and we're going to call that move position 1. And then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to call this one move position 2. And basically what a billboard is, is if I drag that out, it's just a little icon like that, um, which just shows up in the editor that allows you to visualize where things are going to appear or whatever. So in our case, these two billboards are going to be where the platform is going to move to. And you'll be able to adjust these in the editor to change how each platform moves. So if we go into Event Graph now, and if we drag out these two move positions like that, um, and we go Get Relative Location for both of those, get relative location then what we want to do is we want to promote both of those to variables and we're going to call that move pause one oops that's already named so let's just call that move one put that up there and for number two we're going to promote you to a variable as well and we're going to call you move two okay and then we're going to hook those up to the begin play and I like to stack my nodes up like that just because they take up less space you can do this however you want. Um, that's just me being a neat freak. Bloody weirdo. Okay, so now we've got two positions. The next thing that we want to do, so that's out there and it's out there. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create um, some logic for helping the platform move between them. So I'm going to go custom event, add, and we're going to call this start moving. And the reason that I do it by custom event, well, we're going to drag off there and we're going to go start moving off begin play. And the reason I do it like this off the custom event is because maybe in the future we could also have another event down here and we could have this called stop moving if you wanted your platform to activate or deactivate or whatever. So I might just leave that down there for now and I'll show you how you can use that later. So anyway, off start moving, we're going to add a timeline and we're going to call this um, 0 to 1. And you'll see why I'm calling it that in a minute. We're going to open that up, go float track, and we're going to go 0 to 1 up there, change its length to 1 second, looping, right click, add a keyframe. We're going to go 0, 0, then we're going to go 0 0.5 and 1, and then we're going to go another one, and we're going to go 1 and 0. Um, and if you right click these and go user, you can make these, and you click on this little thing on the left here, you can drag that like that and then move this keyframe across so it looks something like that and it's nice and smooth. Do the same with this one down here and now we have a nice smooth curve from 0 up to 1 and then back down to 0. Uh, close that down, we don't need that anymore. And then what we're going to do is we are going to grab this static mesh, um, drag it into there, sorry, um, and we're going to go set relative location and we're going to hook this up to the update. Now, off location, we're going to go lerp and into 
A, we're going to put move 1, and into B, we're going to put move 2. Um, and basically what a lerp does, if you're not familiar with it, is it takes in an alpha value between 0 and 1, and if that value is 0, it's going to read the value of A. If it's 1, it's going to read the value of B. And anywhere in between, it's going to read a value between them both. And then that's going to return here into the set relative location. So, now that we've got A and B into there, we hook the alpha up to this 0 to 1. And what's going to happen is as it goes through this curve, that is going to represent position A. We're going to move to position B up here and then smoothly move back to position A. And because that's set to looping, it is going to cycle through this, and that platform is going to move back and forwards. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing, I mean, actually, before we go to the next thing, we can probably test that. So if we go into this world, drop in our little platform, you can see our billboards here, the little weird dragon lizard thing. Um, if I hit simulate, that is now buzzing back and forwards, and that is extremely quick. So the next thing that we're going to do is in this begin play line, execution line, before we go to start moving, what we're going to do is we're going to go down into our components, grab 0 to 1, go get, and we're going to go set rate, play rate. And we're going to hook that up to here. And this is going to allow us to change the speed at which that platform moves. Now, instead of just setting a rate in there, what we're going to do is we're going to go divided by, oops, divided by a float, and we're going to put 1 in the top, and then we're going to put a variable on the bottom, and that variable is going to be cycle time and we're going to make that public and basically what that cycle time is going to be is how long it takes for the platform to do a cycle from uh, A to B to back again so it's the time, it's the period of the, the oscillation um, and the reason that that works is if we have 1 on the top and say cycle time is 2 on the bottom 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 that sets the play rate to 0.5 um, so this will run at half speed, and because it takes one second to go at normal speed, that'll now take two seconds. So the same thing, if you set cycle time to five, do the math there, this will take five seconds. So by default, let's put the cycle time to five, hit compile, save, come back in here, and now that's a lot smoother than before, and you could probably jump on that, um, and you're more likely to land on it than last time. Um, so that's pretty cool. What we could do is... Something that I like to do whenever I make a blueprint like this is I like to add in some sort of, some degree of randomization between each instance of the blueprint. Um, so what I mean by that is if we just put this guy here and then we go Alt-Click and we make a few copies of this, maybe the objective of your game is to get across like this series of platforms, right? So you could be standing here on something, just ignore the rest of that, and maybe the goal is to jump on here and then to get across all of these, which is way too easy because they're close and moving really slow, but whatever. Um, what would make it more interesting is if you could drag all of these in here and they could all move at different speeds because then you'd have to, you know, adapt and um, improvise as the player to get across. Let's just add a fourth one in back there. Now, because we made this cycle time variable public down there, that means that we can come in here and we can actually edit the time for these. So if we go four for you, five for you, Maybe you can be 3, and then maybe this one at the back can be just insanely fast, like 0 0.5, just for a laugh. And now if we go simulate, they're all moving at different speeds now, so that makes it uh, more challenging and more engaging for the player to get across. Um, but instead of setting them all by hand, which can be a bit cumbersome, a cool thing that you can do is if we go back into this here, and before we set the cycle time, the play rate there with the cycle time, sorry, we could actually take this cycle time off public there and then what we could do is we could duplicate this and we could go mean cycle time and we could also go cycle time deviation and then what we're going to do is we're going to set cycle time up here and what we're going to set it to is a mean cycle time add float and that float is going to be a random float in range from a max of the deviation and a min of the deviation multiplied by negative one. Uh, negative one. And then we can plug that into up there. So now what we've got is say if we set a mean cycle time of five seconds and a cycle time deviation of say two, what this is going to do is for each instance of this platform, 
is it's going to get that mean cycle time of 5, then it's going to get a random value between negative 2 and positive 2, and then it's going to add that to the mean cycle time. So the cycle time up here could be anything between 5 plus 2, 7, or 5 minus 2, 3. So it could be t between anywhere between 7 and 3 seconds. And then we go and set the play rate to whatever that time turns out to be. Now just to neaten this up, because this is a bloody mess, let's highlight all of those and go collapse nodes, and we're going to call this setup parameters, just to keep things nice and neat and tidy. Um, it's always a good thing to collapse nodes like that and use functions and whatnot wherever possible, because as you get more complicated blueprints, things get very confusing and you get lost in the spaghetti. So now that that's set up, if we have a look at all of these... Um, before we do that, actually, let's go back in here, set the mean cycle time to public and the deviation to public. Um, and actually, I won't even need to change that. So we've got 5 and 2, 5 and 2, 5 and 2, 5 and 2. And if I hit play, they should all move at random speeds now because they were all randomized to begin play. So that's kind of cool. And if I hit play again, they'll actually move at different speeds to last time. And again, it'll be different again. So it's going to be different every single time you play, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy games where it's it's different every time and you've got to adapt and master the mechanics rather than memorize the way things move and all of that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, if we wanted to, we could also... Well, that's, that's your moving platform down, so if that's what you came for, you could probably stop watching the tutorial. But... If you're interested, we could take this one step further and down here, offset relative location, we could grab our mesh again and we could also say uh, set rotation, set relative rotation. And we can do the same thing as we did before. Um, let's just collapse this here actually and let's make that a node and we'll say set location just to keep it neat. And then if we go over here, um, we can drag off this and we can say lerp rotator just like we did last time um, and we can go 0 on the Z to 360 on the Z so a full circle hook that up to the lerp there hook that up to the alpha sorry um, and now I believe that should rotate in a full circle with each period yeah there we go so now your platform spin oh and they rewind as well <laughs> that's cool okay so that's another thing that you could do if you wanted to make it really, really challenging for your players, you could also, well, instead of putting your 360 there, you could put a 360 here and <laughs> make them get tipped off the side of the platform. <laughs> That'd make it fucking insane. Um, I wonder if we could slow that down. So alpha... Now that's going from 0 to 1. We'd have to have a separate timeline, I think, to have that move at a different period. Um... You know, that's alright, like, that's kind of cool. I can't be bothered making it... I can't be bothered going into changing the rotation in this video because I'm tired as hell and it's already 10 o'clock and I need to go to sleep, but, you know, that's pretty cool just the way that it is. Um, so I think that's it. If you have any questions about this or if you run into any problems, leave me a comment. Um, if you have any requests for other tutorials, like, I'm happy to take them. Um, this is just kind of fun to do. I don't know why I felt called to do this, but fuck, this is so hard to land on these things. My God. I feel bad for people who try to play my games. I have a tendency to make things just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and he's spinning around. That is so freaking disorientating. Um, if you have any requests, let me know, and I'll see if I can get around to it. If you have any questions, let me know, but otherwise, that's, just, that's the end. Um, I'm going to go to bed. Good night, guys.